Appreciate you, Jared, coming through with the deuce and the super chat. Starting us off early. Appreciate you, appreciate you. Let me do this test in for Jared since he did that. Let me test this right quick. See if this works. Work on the other screens. Okay, gotcha. But I got the I got the other stream closed, so we about to fire this thing on up. What up, what up, what up, good people? Coach Evans, Coach Evans here, Sip the Tally Films on a Tuesday night. Um, got a few things we want to talk about. Um, everybody gave their opinion of Earl Thomas, you know, as soon as it happened. And I kind of sat back in the weeds and wanted to see if more information came out and, and just really wrap my mind around it, the pros and cons of, of the Earl Thomas situation. So if you're just getting here, you notice I put a little agenda in the um, chat box early, and I run down that agenda and kind of that's an overview of how we gonna roll tonight. Uh, first off, I'm gonna talk about Earl Thomas. Uh, got a couple things I wanna say about that uh, roster spots, which is number two. Um, what we're gonna do is I'm talk about the wide receiver roster spots and the uh, O line roster spots, and kind of you know based off what we've been reading from different people that can go to practice, uh, the kind of where they're headed, and this it's gonna be all a guess because we're not at practice. We're not the ones seeing it. We can only read what the uh, reporters are writing. Uh, number three, the announcement that no fans were at the game, or no no fans going are gonna attend the games. Uh, number four, the Dez Bryant tryout, and the remnants of that. And number five, I have a question for you guys, which is the chat box. So um, I have a question for you guys at the end, and that's how we are gonna roll. This probably should take um, no twenty. 30, 45 minutes, somewhere up in there. And then we're going to roll. And I appreciate you guys for sticking with me. I had two videos going. I, I didn't know it. But uh, one, uh, C Iron Addict let me know. And I went and fixed the problem. So that's why I'll be coming to you a little later than normal. But I appreciate you guys being here. I uh, want to say what's up to 86 Ghosts, Lunch Break Hot Take, Garnett, Melvin, Rob, Red, White, and Dude, which uh, that's funny. <laughs> uh, he came here. I guess he saw me in one of the Ravens live streams and he came and joined us tonight. So. Big shout out to Red White and Do, uh, Brandon Lewis, Brandon Weir, Brandon Lewis and Braden Weir. Uh, Big Reg, I see you. Trevor, I see you. Rob, we already got Joseph. And then again, Jared came through with the uh, super chat already with the two dollars super chat. I appreciate you, Jared. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with um, Earl Thomas. Let me grab my phone so we can kind of see where we at. Let's see if I got this right. Got me some notes and whatnot. So the notes will kind of be in the background or in the foreground rather while I'm doing this. 
But there we go. And we'll get to all that. What up, everybody? It's me, it's me, it's me. Probably need to turn my light on, huh? That don't look too hot. So my light won't come on. There we go. Let me dim those lights a little bit. Self talk Garner. What's up? What's good with you? What's good with you? All right, Earl Thomas. So let's talk about Earl. Let's talk about Earl. Earl Thomas was cut. Uh, what's today? Today's Tuesday. So this had to be um, Sunday or Monday. Sunday or Monday. Antoinette, what's up? Appreciate you for coming through. Appreciate you for coming through, Mark. Appreciate you. See you. Earl was cut Sunday or Monday, one of the two days. It, the days kind of run together right now. Um, but... <laughs> He was cut, and we knew he had an issue with Brandon last year when they lost to when we lost to Cleveland, and um, we heard about that. Well, I'm gonna tell you from my standpoint. I heard about that, and I guess they squashed it out, and then we went on that streak where we won a bunch of games, and maybe winning cures a bunch of things. A winning cures a bunch of eels. Oh, the fact that you're winning a lot, you'll let a lot of things slide. You don't want to mess up the chemistry or the train or the streak or, or all that good stuff. You're just trying not to mess with the, the chemistry. Really, you don't want to mess with the chemistry. So winning kind of cures all that stuff and you let stuff build up and and, and go, go on. So apparently, the dust up with, with Big Wheel. Then this summer, he had the incident... Well, he didn't do anything illegal. He just probably embarrassed himself and um, you know the organization because they don't want you to do nothing. They don't want you to. They don't want you to have no headlines that say Ravens safety X Y Z or Ravens quarterback or Ravens receiver X Y Z does something that's you know in a negative light. That's kind of that's bad press for the team because it's always going to lead with Ravens, whatever your position is, then your name. They'll say they'll say your job for they say your name just to throw throw dirt on you like that to keep you know to pile it up. So um, that being said, you got the B-Wheel incident, you got the embarrassment with his wife this summer, and apparently this dude was late for meetings, missing meetings. Um, and I can see if you had a legit excuse, but you missed a meeting to get your car washed, bro. You a multi-millionaire. Your car should never be dirty. You should have people come to your house and wash your car. You should have people to come to wherever Owen, Owen Mills and wash your car while you at practice. They ain't got to go in your car. You just park your car away from everybody else. Say, hey, my car in lot F, spot 600. And they come out there and wash your car. And you pay them cash app or Zelle or whatever you pay them. And you go about your damn business. Dude's a trip, man. Title, in title, and, and I thought what happened in Seattle was, was a one-time incident, like a, a, a an anomaly, so to speak. Come to find out, it ain't. Come to find out, it's not an anomaly. It's it's the norm for him, apparently. It's the norm for him. Now, with that being said, I value team chemistry over individual talent. I value team chemistry over individual talent. Team chemistry and, and guys being on the same page and trusting each other is better than individual talent. One person's individual talent. Now, the pros and cons of losing Earl Thomas. The pro... The good thing about losing Earl Thomas is you get what potentially looks to be like a cancer out of the building. Because, and the reason I say potentially, because for Chuck Clark to be as mad as he was and to throw his heaven on the field, that is so, either it's childish or you've just to a point where you've had enough. And apparently because of Chuck Clark's leadership and 
knowledge of the game and his work ethic, it was to the point where they had had enough. It wasn't childish, they had had enough. It was the, the straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak. Right, Sam, you can watch. He, he'll be in there. You can watch this kind of time. What up, Sam? Uh, Prophet, I see you. Appreciate you for tuning in. Uh, Rab, Mark Rab, I see you. Um, yeah, but he had, it was, he had enough. Sleeping in meetings, missing meetings, blown assignments. And we all know, we know, we know Earl struggled at the beginning of last year. We know he did. We know Earl struggled at the beginning of last year, and we thought it was because he was learning a new system. We know in Seattle, 90 percent of the time plus deep middle playmaker that's you earl deep middle be a playmaker that's you earl because in earl's heyday the legion of boom sherman was going to take care of his deep thirds uh browner was going to take care of his deep thirds both of them six feet plus so you come in with 510 earl and kind of make plays then you had um uh the, the real reason they were called Legion of Boom, uh, what's the boy's name? The other safety that was with Earl. Uh, that was Bam Bam Cam, Cam Chancellor. You had Cam Chancellor de clean people. So, I mean, if and it may seem like I'm hating because he gone now. What up, God, son? Simply AS10, what's up? I appreciate you guys coming through. It may seem like I'm hating now because he's not gone, but I'm not. If you think about it, Earl Thomas was the third best player in the Legion of Boom. Sherman was the first. My opinion, Bam Bam Cam was the second, and then Earl Thomas. Then they they kind of mixed in, you know, corners on that other side. They had a good guy, they lost him, then they brought somebody else in. So really, that that other corner was a, a rotating door, so to speak. It was Brown over there for a while, and he was a tall corner. But uh, Bam Bam, your Richard Sherman, Bam Bam Cam, Earl Thomas. So, but the 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 pro of missing him is that chemistry. We see we got chemistry back. Like, um, I think they interviewed uh, Deshaun Elliott afterwards. Or maybe like the next day. So it had to be Monday. They interviewed him Monday. Or maybe that same day. And um, he's, he thanked Eric Weddle. Like, for gaining knowledge from Eric Weddle. He thanked, he thanked um, uh, Tony Jefferson. I think he even thanked Chuck Clark for, like, helping his maturity. At no point did he say Earl. And his beef, he didn't have, well, we don't think he had beef with Earl. We don't think he had beef with Earl. But he didn't mention Earl in his development at all. In his development at all, period. So that that lack of saying anything lets me know that this has been a buildup. This has been a buildup from probably last year. Probably last year. Now the, the the another pro I think for getting rid of early is you get a younger, I'm going to say more athletic guy, and maybe even a faster guy to play that position. Maybe not as knowledgeable or as instinctive as Earl, but you get a younger, more athletic, and possibly faster guy to play that position. Think about that. Maybe not as knowledgeable yet because he he hadn't got the reps like you know other people have. But and everybody know in NFL, the more reps you get, the more you either pick it up and blossom, or you realize that it ain't for you and you probably have to do. So with them with them reps, it's gonna help him out. And like going Cornette says about the front seven with Seattle, but our front seven gonna help um, Elliot out if he makes it. If he if he ends up being the starter, I think our front seven will help him out. But if he can't handle it, I'm not worried. If Deshaun Elliott can't handle it, I'm not worried. Everybody stay healthy. We all good. Put 22 there. Put 22 there. Put 22 there. And Sam, I did say our defense was complex to him. But it's going to be even more complex if you sleeping in meetings and missing meetings. It's... If it's, all, if it's already hard and you're not doing your best to study and learn the, the, the system, it's going to be harder. It's going to be harder. Like you take, I, I really want to go back and watch the um, Arizona game because Arizona had no business being in that game. 
And I want to see if they got some throws that possibly could have been Earl's um, responsibility. I think I might go back and do that. And if I see something, if I see enough, I'll make a video about it. If I don't see enough, if I see sporadic incidents, I'll just maybe put it on Twitter or something. But Jackson. Jackson says Jimmy can't play free safety. Jimmy's more athletic and less stiff than Earl Thomas. Jimmy's way more athletic than Earl Thomas. Jimmy can play every position back there. Only, only Jimmy's downfall is age and being injured. Age and being injured. <laughs> uh, Iron Addict says, Earl is the bad stepbrother you can't take nowhere. <laughs> he, Earl's the brother that gets in trouble all the time and you guys got to stand outside the store and can't go in with mama. That's what he is. He the guy that, he, he the one that that's just going to the store and, and act a fool and that make it worse on everybody. He the reason we go to the family cookout. Y'all just got to sit in y'all chairs. Y'all can't run around. Big trust. Woo, woo, woo. Lamar Jackson. In the, in the flesh. flesh. Appreciate you, C-Iron. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Lamar Jackson, you know he show up when he get ready. He show up when he get ready. Earl is one of the weirdest guys I've seen in a long time. He seems socially awkward. Huh. Except when he with his brother, huh? Hmm. <laughs> I I didn't have to go there. I'm sorry. I didn't have to go there, but I did. My bad. Uh, <laughs> Jimmy is a press man corner. Jackson, I, I I challenge you, and I'm not I'm not I'm not calling you wrong. I just I challenge you to go back and watch some games from this year when Jimmy was in the game. With Marlin and 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 um, Peters, watch watch some of those games where all three of them are in there at the same time. Even though he may be close to the line of scrimmage or may not be in a traditional cornerback position, he's doing the role of the sa of a safety. I can't call out a specific game to to send you to, but Jimmy played some safety last year. Jimmy played some safety last year. Uh, and, and somebody just brought me to my next point. Uh, Nubian Sage, he says, what's the story on Geno Stone and Nigel Warrior? I was going to mention those guys. I was going to mention those guys. And you can see, matter of fact, we just transitioned to these roster spots for free safety. Let me see if I can make this bigger so y'all can see that. We'll start off with roster spots for free safeties. Close this out of the way. I'll make this bigger. There it is. There you go. We just start off with the free safeties. Can I move this? All right. So the the guys that potentially replace an Earl, that's what we're going to do. Uh, Chuck Clark. We know Chuck Clark's probably going to start. Chuck Clark. Uh, I haven't heard anything different about him not having the green dot. So as far as I know, Chuck's still going to have the green dot. If you guys have heard anything different, you know, put it in the chat box let me know. The guy everybody's talking about right now, and Simply AS10 did a, a, a highlight video, a highlight video about the Joker. So if, when you finish it, go check that out. Simply AS10 did a, a highlight video about the Joker. Firework, always firework. That kid does an, an, an amazing job, an amazing job on his his um, his videos. Keep what clean. Who 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 that cursing? Who cursing? I don't see it, but the panel that mail. <laughs> the, the Joker. Not a lot of reps. 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 That's my biggest thing. It's been hurt a little bit. It's just tough to to judge him. I, I don't have what up gamer. I don't have anything negative to say about him. his game yet. Cause I haven't seen enough of it. I haven't seen enough of it to critique it, to judge it, and say this dude is X, Y, Z, or whatever. And, I, and watching his highlights, he looked great. But you got to watch the whole. You got to watch whole tapes to see the good and the bad. Got to see the, the good and the bad. That's why. And I don't know if you notice or not, but like when we have kids that are being recruited, 
the college coaches ask for they ask for a highlight tape, and they ask for like three to four games. And the reason they ask for those games are to see, and I'm gonna take the receivers, you know, position to see if you take plays off when the ball's not coming to you. Like if the ball's going right, you know, a lot of in high school, a lot of people like they it's gonna go right or it's gonna, they're gonna run it, or they're gonna go left or they're gonna run it. It's not gonna be a lot of whole field reads. So they ask for highlight tape and three to five, maybe even six regular games to see your whole body at work. And that's what we need a whole we need a whole body at work to judge. Uh, the Joker on, and definitely not having preseason is going to put us in a bind to where we might have to find out in the first game. May have to find out in the first game. Uh, Jordan Richards is the next guy on the list. I don't know much about him. I don't have plus or minus to say about Jordan Richards. I don't know much about him. Geno Stone. Geno Stone is, was drafted. He was our last draft, last draft pick. I don't know if it was six or seven rounds. But he was our last draft pick uh, from Iowa. Thick joker. So when, when I see him on the, the Ravens practice streams or whatever, thick. Thick lower body. Like a like a like a like a one big muscle. Which is which is good, especially if you're gonna be around that box and you know, making tackles and whatnot. But I think he's on along the lines of what Chuck Clark does. He's like the, I think he's like the hybrid guy. That's my two cents. I haven't seen him play in the pros. He made plays in college. He made plays in college. And when I went back and did his game live, he didn't make a lot of plays. That was probably one of the more boring live games we watched together. <laughs> but it just leads me to this next guy, Nigel Warrior. Played at Tennessee. And if you're new to the channel, you know I have an extreme, and I'm, t and I'm probably wrong for it, I have an extreme SEC bias. Um, you know, and I know good players come from other conferences, but I have an extreme SEC bias until you show me. Until you show me, because I know in the SEC, them guys they go. I don't want to say the war, because you know, war is war, and football is not war. They go to. They have tough fights in the SEC almost every week, especially if you come from a team that's not very good. I mean, you battling the, the top ush echelon of football every week. Every week. And I like Nigel Warrior. And based off his college tape and Geno Stone college tape, I originally said Warrior's going to be better than Stone. And I still stick to that. I stick to that. I stick to it. I think Warrior might make the team before Stone make it. I do. That's my two cents. Don't, don't write that down. Don't go back. That's I just think that, and like we, uh, Warrior apparently made some plays yesterday, or made a play yesterday, and was talked about in the media. And I hadn't heard uh, Gino made a play, but I think Garnett was the one that showed me an article where they said Gino made a play um, last year or whatnot. Frankie says uh, Gino didn't play well to his final year, and that was the year he went all out. Well, and not to be a smart, but Joe Burrow ain't played well to his final year either. You see where he at. <laughs> so, you know, not comparing Nigel Ward to Joe, Bur Joe Burrow. I know they're the same thing. But, um, you know, it is what it is. And then number six, the guy that got there to replace that spot is, is the guy we, we started off talking about, Jimmy Jimmy Smith. I think Jimmy Smith can play every position back there. I think if he stays healthy, he's going to be a matchup problem because he can cover tight ends. He can go cover the Kittle. He can cover the the um what's that boy I can't say the Kelsey. He can cover the the Urch. I don't think we play San Francisco, but I know we play I know we play uh Philadelphia. I know we play Kansas City. So he could cover the Urch and the the Kelsey. Now, can he get them down on the ground if they catch the ball? That's one thing. <laughs> but he can cover them definitely. Can he get them on the ground if they catch the ball? That's a that's another story because them, them boys big, especially um, Kelsey. Um, then if, if God forbid something happens to a corner, you slide him right, right in there. You slide him right in there. Now, you may not have a guy that can stay over top of people like Marlon and, and Peters can, but you got a smart, savvy guy that can jump routes and, and get past deflections, past breakups, um, and maybe a pick or two. 
Jimmy is Jimmy is that Swiss Army knife in Wink's pocket right now. Jimmy is that that you you got a bottle opener, you got a little jab knife where you can maybe scare some fish, you got a, you know a little bigger knife where you can maybe skin something, you got some the little scissors where you can do X Y Z, you got the thing where you can pick your nails. That's Jimmy. That's Jimmy right there. Agree or disagree? Agree or disagree? I see uh, Turtles going to miss and maybe get Brandon Carr back for depth. I agree with that too. We signed a receiver and a kicker today, I think. A punter, maybe. A receiver and a punter today. And then worked out a bunch of um, running backs. And the running backs we worked out, I'd be cool with Del if Delance came back. I would be cool if Delance came back and and maybe even if he went on the practice squad. That'd be cool for Delance to come back and – Cause he was on the practice squad last year. I think Miami Miami picked him up and um, maybe cut him at the end of the year. But the Lance was here last year, so that'd be cool for him to come back. Um, let's see what we have. I think we're still on roster spots. Let me slide up. Frankie B, appreciate it, appreciate it, appreciate it. Frankie B coming through with the dime, appreciate it. But Jimmy Smith's a good tackler, so I'm not worried. Jimmy is more locked down than most Ravens fans. I agree, Frankie. I 100% agree. 100% agree. Didn't Jimmy get beat a number of times last season? Possibly. I that, it don't nothing pops up in my head where he was terribly beat last year, but he possibly could have been beat beat before. He's you know he's not human. He, he, I mean I'm sorry he is human. He is human, but he's Jimmy. Woo woo Lamar Jackson. In, in the, the flesh. flesh. Um, Jimmy's, uh, like I say, he's a Swiss Army knife. He, he can, no no DB doesn't get beat. Put it like that. No DB doesn't get beat multiple times. Multiple times, no DB don't get beat. You got to have that that quick memory. Got to have that quick memory. Though the Browns game is a blur to me. I don't, ooh. Did we play the Browns early last year? That game was a blur. I don't. All I remember is some guy running down the field for 88 yards. Everything else is is blurry. It's blurry. That, whew. that Browns game was bad. Man, I don't even wear the color. I don't even wear khakis no more because of that. Nah, I'm lying. I had no khakis yesterday. <laughs> but um, appreciate you, Frank, again for the, for the dime. Uh, and Jimmy do hold it down when he, and he held it. Garnett kind of says that to you, Miss Antoinette. When Jim is healthy... When he's fully healthy, and he looks from you know from reports, he looks in shape. I I don't think I'd be far fetched saying Jim is a dog when he healthy. I don't I would not think I'd be far fetched from saying Jim is a certified dog when he healthy. Now he may not be a top ten corner in the league when healthy, but I bet you he's the number one third corner. Or the number one fourth corner. I bet you that. I bet you Jim is the number one third or fourth corner in the league. <laughs> if that was a category. If that was a category. Um, let me answer some of these questions. Earl gave up on that. Man, let's. We I addressed Earl. And I'm going to hit you with um, one of. Uh, what's his name? Bill Belichick quotes. On to Deshaun Elliott. No more comments about Earl. On to Deshaun Elliott. Anybody, anytime somebody else asks me about Earl, on to Deshaun Elliott. That's that's I'm getting that from Bill Belichick. <laughs> um, let's see. What up, Devin? Do I think Nurse is gonna make the practice squad? I think Nurse would have made the practice squad if he get if he hadn't got hurt. And depending on how hurt he is, will determine on how. If he makes the team, if he makes the practice squad, if he can get on back on the field and and produce, and because I heard he had um, a couple of plays the other day, well, I heard I read he had a couple of plays the other day. So if he can, whatever his injury is, if he can get on back on the field and, and go from there, and you know, can be good. Uh, with Calais Campbell and Derek Wolf on the roster, we should have much better pass rush this year. That are also definitely lunch break hot take says our, basically he's saying our defensive. Front seven is going to help our secondary with with um, coverage. 
And you know what? I'm. It's a stat out there that I'm going to be happy. I should have brought me some water in here. It's a stat out there that I'm going to be happy that I hope we don't lead the league in again. And that's being that's the most blitzing team with the least sacks. We were the most blitzing team last year with the least amount of sacks. And that puts a lot of pressure on your DBs. That puts a lot of pressure on your DBs. I'm laughing at G Wiz's response to Tony Jefferson. <laughs> and and I like Tony as a player. I mean as a person. I don't know him personally, but I like him. I like, you know, the fact that he still supports Ravens people, like individually. I don't know how he feels about the organization, but I think I like the fact that he still supports like the different people when they post stuff. He reposts it or or just, you know, likes it or whatnot. But it's not a coincidence that a lot of things started to go up for us defensively when he went down. I don't know the direct correlation. Like, I don't know if he was just not making plays or he was not doing what he needed to do or whatnot. But I just know a lot of things, the defense started to go up when he went down. And I'm not wishing injury on anybody. Anybody. G. We say we still gonna blitz like crazy, but yeah, I, I I think so too. But what I'm interested to see is the stunt work, the stunt work with Wolf and Campbell and Judon and Bowser and McPhee and Queen and and, and Harrison and Ford and Alaka. If he get a chance, I'm interested in, interested to see the the T E stunts or the the middle stunts or the backers cross. I'm interested to see how how Wink in, you know put all that in there because you got coverage on the back end. It's, and Warren Sapp used to say this on NFL Network before he got it X'd off. The front end and the back end got to work together. And I think we got a defense now where the front end and the back end definitely going to work together. Definitely, definitely, definitely going to work together. All right, I think I addressed that. But that started with the, um, with the Jimmy Smith question. So let's talk about roster spots with receiver. With receivers. So basically I got nine guys up there that I saw on the roster before we took off. And let's just say we keep in six of these guys. So let me, let me highlight the guys we gonna, we probably going to keep. Keeping that dude, which is Miles Boykin. Hollywood Brown, that's two. Duvernay, three. Proche, four. Sneed, five. So... Uh, apparently, Jaleel Scott had a bad day today. Apparently, Jaleel Scott had a bad day. Um, uh, missed the ball or whatever. Appreciate you, Vach. Appreciate you coming through. Appreciate you coming through. Actually, uh, if you're still in here, I had a couple of Cowboys people hit me up on Twitter um, wanting me to get in their conversation about Earl Thomas. And um, it was It was okay. They were, they were not I Am Legend Monsters, so it, the little back and forth we had was was okay. But back to the roster spots. Uh, Boykin, Brown, Duvernay, Prochet, Sneed. And with uh, Scott having that bad day throwing his helmet and seemed to be extremely frustrated, I hope this is a one-time thing, but I don't – if he's that frustrated, stuff like that for him has probably been happening all camp. And he's probably feeling the pressure that he's not going to make it. Lunch Day High Break just said it. He's probably feeling the pressure that he's not going to make it. So, with that being said, I think the Andrew White is the dude we picked up today. I think that's the dude we signed today with the punter. And um, I read something was saying he came out and made a few plays, and the guys were saying that's, he only did it because he had fresh legs. So, with, with that being said, unless we bring somebody in, unless we bring somebody in, not named D'Andre White. I think Chris Moore solidifies that six spot. And, and and if Chris Moore solidifies this spot, let me change this color real quick. This dude right here got to go. If, if Chris Moore ends up being the sixth receiver and we don't bring anybody in, that guy in the green has to go to freak off for us to, to uh, for us to be top tier. That guy in the green has to go to freak off for us to be top tier. If he goes off, if he if he can get 
40 catches. If Boyd can get 40 catches, average anywhere from 10 to 15 yards a catch. Because of the finger. <laughs> yes, that man missed him. I, I said I wasn't talking about Earl. You came back over here. I ain't mean talking about Earl no more. Earl someone getting his car washed. That's why he ain't signed. Stop bringing up Earl Thomas, botch. But yeah, he missed the meeting to get his car washed. Definitely. And went to sleeping meetings. And was late for meetings. Yes. But boy can need to average 10 to 15 yards a catch. <laughs> <laughs> Gee whiz, Earl and his car are now washed. <laughs> Good one. But uh, uh, more, I think more messed up on the, the finger. What up, Engraver? Appreciate you for coming through. Uh, and so if his finger is messed up, then we still got a spot. So let's take more off. Let's take more off. I knew he had been missing practice, and I don't know if it was the finger or what, but let's, let's unhighlight more. If it, let, if it let me be great, there we go. So, that still leaves. We got to get somebody, man. If y'all look at this list. If y'all look at this list. We need another receiver. Look at this list. It's definitely if Moore is out with his finger or whatever was, was hurting him. We need another guy. The guy I want. Cannot be on the Ravens team now, especially after what happened with Earl Thomas. So, I'm not going to even say sign AB anymore because what happened with Earl Thomas X is that completely out. So, let's, which uh, another topic we had was going to talk about Dez. We're going to talk about Dez. I was against Dez at first because I personally wanted AB. I think AB was better than Dez. But Dez had baggage too. So is is Dez and A B are they affected by what happened with Earl? Cause you know we like a no nonsense, no we don't we don't do that foolery stuff in Baltimore. Boy, Keenan Allen on this team would be nasty. Working in and working the slot in and out routes. Keenan Allen got Keenan Allen got route routes. Even though Derwin on tap on camera, man, hold on, I gotta go watch Hard Knocks. Even though Derwin on camera locking him up, but Keenan Allen got raps. Keenan Allen got for real raps, for real, for real. But we need we just just the lead. We need a receiver, and 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 I say that because Duvernay and Proche are, have not proven anything. Sneed's okay. Sneed's okay. We need somebody to be on the other side of Brown. That's going to not allow defenses to scheme for Brown and Mark, Mark Andrews. You need That's why I said Boykin needs to be that guy. 40 catches, average 8 to 15 yards a catch. Zilla, and I, I, I'm, I hope you're right, Zilla. My favorite name on this list besides Brown is Proche. My favorite name on this list besides Brown is Proche. And I did videos earlier in the process about Duvernay and Proche. Both of them rarely drop balls. Rarely drop balls. Rarely drop balls. But a lot of Duvernay routes were around the line of scrimmage, bubbles and stuff like that. And I don't think Luke Duvernay dropped the ball. But Proche was make, was going up over people getting getting balls. Proche was playing 6'3 at 5'10". That's why I like Proche. And then he got those short choppy steps like A B to get in and out of breaks. It's shh, I like Proche. I do. I really do. So Proche is my my man crush in this receiver group next to Brown. But we need a guy. We need a guy. And so then just to, to kind of finish this roster spice thing off, we're gonna jump down to these linemen. Um Let me get my highlight out. These guys down at the bottom, I'm gonna go ahead and highlight them first because they definitely gonna be there. You got Stanley's gonna be there. If I highlight it right. Stanley's gonna be there. Brown's gonna be there. Bozeman's gonna be there. Uh Fluker's gonna be there. And right now it looks like Fluker is the the leader in the clubhouse. And we ain't in the clubhouse yet. But from all the reports, it looks like Fluker is the one taking those snaps at um at guard. 
at right guard at at the spot replacing Yonder. Right guard. Um, center. McCarr played some center last year. Uh, Skrill played center. So I don't know if those two guys are battling for that. Word on the street is, well, what I read is, where is he? Was it Ben Powers? I think it was Ben Powers that had a bunch of snaps. A bunch of bad snaps today. <laughs> I gotta show I gotta show his his message so he can get so he can get all his all his stuff out. I don't want him to I don't want him to think I'm holding him back. Cause you know we opinion based and we like different opinions. So Jay I'm gonna address Jay Sway real quick. Jay Sway twenty four. He said, I'm sick of you Ravens fans, L O L. He said, Watch when this shit backfire. Y'all be crying for Earl. The funny thing is, he right. It may backfire. We don't know what Deshaun Elliott can do. We don't know if Jimmy gonna stay healthy. We, we don't know. It may backfire. But chemistry and culture over the individual. That's that's why that's why I gotta disagree with you. I don't know if you saying we should have kept him or not, Jace Wade, but that's why I gotta disagree with you. Chemistry over the individual. Chemistry over the individual. A cancer. And y'all know how cancer works in the body. It, 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 and I hate to compare cancer in the body to a football team, but it's the same. It's the same process, so to speak. And you know, in a different way. You got one guy over here, this grown, not really doing stuff the way he want. Then he gonna recruit this other guy, and this other guy gonna kind of start pulling back and not doing it the Raven way. Then both of them gonna recruit this guy. Then you gonna start back and not doing it the Raven way. Now you got. You know, after a year or, or half a year, especially if you're not winning, especially if you're not winning, you got a whole locker room that's divided. Us winning helped Earl, we helped that Earl situation. Because if that stuff was happening last year and we weren't, we weren't, we were not winning, then he might not have made it to a second year. Honestly, he might not have made it to a second year. But still, back to talking about Earl again, golly. God, let's, we talking about these O-line. So, um, Bredesen supposedly had some good reps. We're holding on enough about, I think Tristan was a undrafted a UDFA center. Uh, Ehinger and Sean Pollard. So, if we keeping, say, eight of these guys, this is six. I'm going to say we keeping Bredesen. Uh, Powers. And if we keep another, it's going to be Phillips. Gonna be Phillips. I think Phillips can be a backup guard. I think Phillips can I mean not about backup guard. I think Phillips can be a backup tackle, but probably will be a starting guard in somewhere in the near future. Somewhere in the near future. So that's that's where we are on that. Alright. So we got our roster spots done. We talked about Earl. Uh what was, what was number four on that list? Talked about Jimmy. Let me scroll back up to the top. Talked about Dez trial. Oh, no fans at the game. No fans at the game. How many? How many of you guys were planning to attend the game? I definitely was. I had I had planned to go up there for preseason before my season started, and I had planned to go back. Um, in I think early December, like maybe the second week of December, whoever that whatever game that was. But, um, and depending on how our season went, I was going to try to get to that Dallas game, too. That's going to be a big game, the Dallas game. But I was definitely going to make my way to a game. I went to one last year, most of you know, and had a blast in terrible weather. It rained almost the, the whole time, but I had a blast. I actually got a chance to sit in a good seat, me and, uh, a uh, Ravens film study, uh, Ken. We we sat together and you know I had, he took me out to breakfast. We had a, I had a great time in Baltimore. Um, I just had a great time. Can't wait to go back. Can't wait to go back. Um, Nubian say Jacks about Tyler Huntley. Tyler Huntley. I said it earlier. I think Tyler Huntley would beat. Um, what's a quarterback? What's the number seven? What's the other quarterback? What's that guy's name? I can't think his name from Penn State. 
drawing a blank right now. Drawing a blank. Our third quarterback from last year, from Penn State, Trace McSword. I think Tyler Huntley has beat Trace McSword out. I do. I do. I just do. <laughs> I just do. But, um... Man, it's it's crazy. I just hope everybody I hope I hope I hope the mask, us wearing masks and us being safe and washing our hands limits all this this inactivity with each other down to one season. One season of basketball, one season of baseball, one season of football, one season of hockey or whatever. I hope all this is limited to us missing to experience one season. I hope we can do the things necessary. Us as citizens and the doctors and the researchers and all of them can do enough to limit this to one season of missing, not missing sports, but being in the environment. Being in in the environment. All right, let me take a few of these questions real quick before I give you guys your closing question. Hmm... Road trip. Man, I'm flying all the way up there. You better meet me there. I ain't trying to drive. <laughs> but um what you what you think about the game streaming? Um I'm not sure what you mean, self talk Gardner. Ask, ask me in a different I'm not I'm not understanding your question. Uh do you Oh you talking to Brad? Trace check, Trace McCheck down. <laughs> Which running back you think would get traded out of the four? No way in hell we have four active running backs. I don't think any of them going nowhere. Initially, I thought Bus was going somewhere. But have you seen Gus? Gus is like a Terminator in, in them practices. Ain't no way I'm getting rid of that dude for nothing. Gus out there in his pads looking like Hasta la vista, baby. And he going to take some of them dives and he going to meet a linebacker in the hole that ain't really got all the bricks in their pocket. And it's going to be on AS10. It's going to be simple AS10 highlights. That's what's going to happen. We ain't even saying this. We ain't even saying this sports in the top 10. That's If you make a big play, it's a simple AS10 highlight coming up. We're going to him for highlights. We ain't going to... You know the the big guys on because they, they don't give us the, the coverage we want. So we we gonna go to the people that give us the coverage we want. So when people make big plays and and you see them on Twitter or somewhere else, tag simply AS10. And if he's still in here, put your Twitter in here so we can tag you and see stuff so you can make your edits and and do your deal. We can come to you and get your likes and views and all that stuff up. Cause the the, the big networks don't give us the coverage we want for our team, and we don't just have a Ravens network unless you live in Baltimore and they kind of have the local news. But uh, that's why we had with that. Now, with you guys closing question, before we get up out of here, man, I've been on here an hour. I didn't even realize that. Uh, the question for you guys. Question for you guys. Who is your sleeper? Who is your sleeper to make the 53-man roster? None of the, the big names that we know we got or whatever. What sleeper, what guy in camp that you think is going to make the roster? And this question is going to be harder than normal because there ain't no preseason game for you to say, ooh, what's Calvin showing out? Or, ooh, he did this. Or, did you see such and such moss? Such? You got to go off reports from people that are at practice, college tape, and maybe the little bit of stuff you see on um, the training camp videos. Going there says John Docker. John Docker's the um, for those that don't know, Doc is an undrafted free agent, uh, defensive end type type personality from um, JMU. JMU. Somebody else, Big Uncle says Docker. Rob says Docker. Uh, John is lights up. Yeah, I, but that's that's JMU though, Garnett. That's JMU. That fan versus that's JMU. That ain't versus that ain't versus Orlando Brown. That ain't versus uh, Tristan Wirfs. That ain't. Whew. Oh, Jared went out on a, on a limb limb. 
Jared went on a limb limb. He said, Jaleel Scott. G Wiz, I was hurt when they cut and they cut uh, uh, Rick Steiner. I was hurt then. Turtles, I'm, I'm rooting for Chauncey too. Turtles, I'm rooting for Chauncey. I just I ain't seen much in practice. I ain't seen nobody write about him. Nothing, 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 nothing. Melvin, if you talking about Gus, yes I did. Yes I did. I, I'm rooting for Nigel Warrior too. Lunch break. I'm rooting for lot, Nigel Warrior. I, I just need to see more of the, of the, of the Docker going there. I need to see more of the Docker. J see, this what we get, you know, uh, La Tech is D1. JMU is maybe NAIA or D2. I don't, I don't know what classification JMU is. But La Tech is, is, is D1. Conference USA. That's, that's different from JMU. And the fact Docker had another dude on the other side of him just as fast. Looked just like him as far as rocked up and speed. So he had two guys on the end blazing people like that. Two. I forget the other dude's name, but I saw Docker on that other guy's video that Vox Lombardi had put out. So that's how I know they got two guys setting the edge over there for JMU that was look like bodybuilders. Look like bodybuilders. What about the past Russia in New Orleans? Who can't, man, come on now. You, you know I don't like Cam. Cam sacked me every time I played New Orleans and man. I don't like Cam. Ravens, I, I it's tough. It's going to be tough to pick up the 53 this year. Pick the 53 this year. It's going to be real tough. No preseason games to watch. So you can't, like, form your opinion on your own. It's it's tough. It's tough. It's tough. It's tough. If it, uh, Nubian says if we if we keep four four interior linebackers, I think a lock is good. But if we keep if we just keep three, he out of there. But I think we'll keep him because he'll he'll get a, you know he'll play special team stuff too. So I think I think he's safe. I think he's safe. But as far as the interior guys, I think it's gonna be the two young guys, um, Harrison and Queen, Fort and a locker. I think that's the interior guys we're gonna take. But. Uh, Man, I expect this to be. I say this is gonna be 20, 30 minutes. It's 10 o'clock. Man, I appreciate y'all for coming through. Uh, I appreciate the support. I appreciate Jared for dropping Deuce in the super chat. I appreciate. Let me find it. Let me find it. Let me find it. Let me find it. Frank and B for dropping 10 in the super chat. Got one more. Got one more. Iron Addict dropping Deuce in the super chat. I appreciate you guys, man. I appreciate you. And if any of y'all supporting me on any other platforms, whether it be uh, PayPal or Cash App. You get the first shout out when we come up because I don't see anything in my phone, so I think we good. I don't want to miss nobody. Let me check my phone. Uh, oh, got a, a twenty five from from Brandon. I appreciate you, Brandon, for dropping that in the PayPal. Coming through with the, with the. Let me see if I get a Lamar Jackson for him. See this act right. Big trust. Woo woo, Lamar Jackson. In the flesh. That's a branding of, for dropping something in the PayPal. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Everybody for the support, man. Uh, today is Tuesday. I'm going to try to come back with you maybe Friday night. Give some news, some time to add up so it won't be a quick stream. And um, when the season get back, remember that the phone line is going to be open too. I still got the phone line. So after the games, we're going to get on the phone and you're going to tell me how you feel with your, you know, whatever the game went, whether it be good or bad. What you saw, what you liked, what you didn't see. And um, you won't get a pick in the 53 from me this year because I don't have film to go off of. And I try to, I want to try to get that thing as close as I can. And I got pretty good last year. I got pretty close last year. I think I got, uh, they like, like four wrong. Maybe four wrong, I pick in the 53. But I appreciate it again, man. It's Coach Evans, Sip the Tally Films, man. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Um, see you when I see you, which will be Friday. Peace.